Okay, I'm just gonna hit my intro if it works. Sometimes it works. To another episode of the Typical Skeptic Podcast. I have another fascinating guest with me back today. I have with me uh, Pink Bella Aloha or Aloha Pink Bella, whichever way you want to say it. But she she's a multidimensional star seed awakener. She's uh, she channels Akashic Records. Um, she deals with ascension systems. Um, she works directly with star seeds. Um, she gets deep into it, kind of like Indigo Angel does. You know what I mean? Um, some of the stuff they say goes over my head. I mean, if you want to talk to me about UFOs and alien abduction, I'm right there. But this stuff sometimes, I mean, I understand it, but it's 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 inter- it's interesting. But uh, she knows a lot more than me, and she's gonna she's here to share her knowledge today, and um, it's gonna be awesome. She's gonna do a collective reading, but we're gonna get into some some of the stuff that's been going on with like me and and why like things end up the way they do and uh and and we're gonna it's gonna be interesting to say the least but i want to give her a big warm welcome to the show pink bella thank you for coming back on how are you i'm fantastic rob thank you so much for having me i'm really excited to be here today aloha everybody aloha hi bob tribe and and honestly like i just to get into some of the stuff you do you do ascension multi-dimensional guide 12 chakra energy readings, higher dimensional self liaison, twin flames, star seeds, soul missions, Akashic records, VIP mentorship, life coaching, uh, you can and pet pet communication. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. I was actually going to be a vet when I started, really? like long million years ago. I was actually I take I studied the last couple of years of high school. I studied all these sciences because I was going to go into veterinary school because I loved animals so much. I thought everybody could communicate with animals. That was my very first thing that I could do. So <laughs> how did, apparently how not. Did you kind of get into all this esoteric stuff, and then what made you want to go so deep into star seeds? Well, okay, yeah. So I, I think we touched a little bit on this last time. Um, I, what happened was most of us end up on our own personal healing journey, one way or another. It could be emotional. It could be from a trauma from childhood. It could be something physical that shows up in our reality that makes us um, have to take notice, and that's a priority. Our physical body will bring in things super quickly so that it says, hey, you have to make me a priority. So what happened was I was in tech for years. I was in tech support and uh, project management for like 20 something years. That's what I studied for like when I was unconscious. But through all of that, I couldn't find the answers in the regular mainstream to help me with my anxiety, my stress, my, um, you know, things that would get triggered and I wouldn't even want to leave the house. So I slowly started working towards that and how it happened was I started having a lot of food allergies when I was really young by the time I hit 16 I had to physically go see somebody because it's like everything I ate I had a reaction to and actually I had somebody in my life who knew who to, who to send me to so I I chose you know we all chose where we incarnated and we can move around on this planet especially now more freely <laughs> compared to the last couple of years but we incarnate we chose a place to incarnate knowing what was going to unfold and who we would be able to go to so i chose a place on the planet where there already were a lot of natural paths and a lot of natural healers in the west coast I, we had a little bit of a granola area so i look back and i think i'm really blessed that i actually had a lot of people to choose from to go see so every cent that i made went to going to healing sessions yeah that's so cool. And and, and and then um how did you get so deep into Star Seeds? What I was gonna say is like what you and Indy um Indigo Angel and Light Star do, it kind of reminds me, it's like reminiscent of Ashiana Dean. I was always a big fan. Yes, of I love Ashiana Dean. And I yeah, me too. And I and believe it or not, she just arrived in my reality in the last couple of years. So I've tried to sort of bring in transmissions without a lot of watching a lot of other people and and um because we all we get you know we inspire one another but we also sort of um it's like an infiltration you know i could watch all of Sasha on dean's information and then just bring it through the same way so i tried to just listen to people afterwards but the starseed thing came to me really early you wanted to talk about ufos i saw ufos um the first one i saw was like i say 18 
years old. I was driving home from a club night. <laughs> and, uh, and back then, there it was so forested here. Like the, the highway, the freeway that I took home at night, there was no buildings around. So it was very like um, dark and stars out. And a bunch of cars were pulled over on the side of the road. So I pulled over and there was this huge ship um, that showed us all. And that was before the internet. So I just ex had that experience with all those people. And then, of course, I looked up. Nothing was ever said in the news. Not nothing in the newspapers was ever said about it. But that was my first, like, oh. And I knew it anyway. I thought, they're just letting me know that we're not alone. You know. And did yeah. you feel like it was, like, extraterrestrial? Or did you think it was oh, yeah. or what did you think? No, no. It was a huge, like, a huge ship, like they showed us later in Star Wars that kind of thing, but it, it, but it was more circular, like, um, oh, I can't think of all the movies now. All the, you know, we talked a little bit about this last time, all the movies are downloads and transmissions, even if the writers don't know what they're bringing in. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that makes sense, because, like, it's like, where do they get this information from? It's all channeled. Like, I've heard that, yeah. uh, I even heard that George Lucas, I think it was George Lucas, I heard he had an NDE, which is interesting. Like, I'm yeah. not sure, it, like, so it makes me think sometimes if people go to the other side and they see stuff and then they bring it back here, or if that yeah. inspires them to think yeah. outside the box or something. Well, and, and I would say a transmission is our creative connection to the universe that brings in information. So, so many, um, you know, artists and musicians are bringing in transmissions, even if they're not aware of that. But I think many more are starting to understand that they're, they're doing that. Like it's a, you know, they say it's a God given gift and it is because they've got a connection to the divine and they're bringing in that information. So, yeah. yeah. One, one thing I wanted to touch on now that we got caught up with, with what you, you, your past and everything is this is something really important because you're a life coach and like, I really yeah. think you could help me with this. And it's probably something okay. good to get into. It'll be really interesting for the audience. I mean, I hate bearing my personal stuff out there, but I kind of feel like I have to, because like, I have to get over this to move on. And like my, yeah. the person I was with, that I'm about that you know like she moved on she's with someone else okay but like it hurt me so bad because I thought we were so close that I feel like it left like an emotional tear in my energy field and then I honestly yeah. feel like you know that manifested like physical issues that's why I ended up in the emergency room the other day and like they couldn't find anything that was wrong they did a cat scan on me i let them give me all that radiation yeah i'll admit it like I'm, <laughs> but no but That's besides okay. they did a urine and they did a blood screen and everything was fine but there i was having extreme abdominal pains and then besides yeah. that i've noticed that i've been like real bitter and i mean i'm trying not to be i've been real bitter yeah. and angry and i was like well, why am i acting like this and, and 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 i was thinking it has to be because of the breakup or what happened you know what i mean and I, I don't yeah i got my little i got my little god bumps when you were sharing that so that's like you're right on target that's my little like you're absolutely on target absolutely heart heartbreak especially when we're with somebody that we've got a deep soul connection with and then it ends and then they if they move on you know it's 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 devastating and you know i will i'll share with you we talked a little bit about this last time these connections are multi-dimensional so it's not just a connection from this life. It's you, you've had other lifetimes with this person. You're talking to someone who went through the exact same thing. I, the twin flame connection, whether we call it a twin flame, a soulmate, or a divine union connection, is multidimensional. We set it up to meet these souls. And of course, we want our happily ever after. Of course, we do. But what it does, what the, you know, one of the big messages besides yeah obviously your your body is trying to transmute the grief the sadness the anger all of that and we'll talk a little bit about that but the the actual fact of that when the happily ever after doesn't happen i'll tell you 99 percent of these unions right now are where you are they're not happily ever after so people out there who are saying they're twin flames and they're happily ever after i i beg to differ that they are actually twin flames because a twin flame connection is what you're going through. A twin flame connection is very difficult for both souls to remain in the same frequency and remain together because there's a frequency shift. Usually one or the other starts quantum jumping into a higher frequency and a higher reality. And then it ends up, if we think about binaural beats, 
One yeah. will go up to like the 900 hertz and the other one will go down. You know what I mean? It's always that. So there's constant friction. There's loops. There's karmic loops. There's traumas. Uh, the twin flame connection, what I learned, I was in that, that connection for eight years. It, it's such an accelerated growth period. And that's really what it's all about. The, the other soul shows up to help us get to a point where we never would have gotten to without them being in our reality. And I know it doesn't help much, but the love is unconditional and it's multidimensional. So there's still a soul love there. But sometimes in this reality, the humans can't find a way to be together because it's just so much work. Like it's a lot of intense work. So the fact, you know, even if we are able to be with somebody for a certain period of time, that was a gift for both of you. Um, and we do lodge emotions in our body. So that's how I started too. I actually went to somebody at some point that um, once I got through the food allergy part, I went to somebody who did like um, multidimensional kinesiology. He didn't call it multidimensional back then, but he, as soon as he started getting into my past lives, he said, I don't do that. And he, and I, he recommended me to someone else. But up until then, what we worked on was he would test my meridians. So all the meridians are connected to our organs. And then the meridians is like a, is a very detailed map of the chakra system. So the, let's say, so lung, lung is connected to grief. There's a lung meridian and that can come up in a session of like energy and grief is stuck in the lung meridian and, or, and anger is in the liver. Uh, things like that. Um, oh, fear that is because that's where my pain was. My pain was in the lower right side of my abdomen. I like where your intestines yeah. or liver would be. And what was interesting is uh, my friend Shannon. She's a really nice girl. She watches my show. She goes by the name Classically Soulful on YouTube. If you ever see her, oh cool. Hi, like, okay. Anybody watching? I mean, I know we're not live. Hi but Shannon. So <laughs> I know. She, she was trying to explain to me the meridians and I pointed out the meridian where it was actually where I thought it might've been stemming. Yeah. From. That goes back to like Chinese medicine too, right? Or yeah. Like yeah. It's so the meridians were introduced to me really early on. Like it was introduced to me through him in my twenties. And then I started bringing the meridians into my sessions two years ago because I had to start working on them on myself. Like I, so, so sometimes it is an emotion that's trapped. So you're, you're, so I'm glad you went to the hospital and got tested because you were in extreme pain. And when that comes on, we have no idea what's going on. So sometimes we have to go to the traditional route and get tests done. So I'm glad they did the test and I'm glad that you're okay. And they couldn't find anything. And your liver was basically letting you know, yeah, we've got, we've got some stuff going on here. But I want to let you know, like, the, to clear the meridians is just as easy as clearing the chakras. That's why I include them in my sessions as well, because it's a very fine, detailed map of our anatomy, our, our energy body that's trying to run our physical body as well. So, yeah, the, the, the liver would come up for me all the time. And, it was, and he would tell me it was anger. And I was like, I'm such a nice person. I don't have any anger. Yeah, I was internalizing it. I wasn't expressing it. Yeah. And I think that's where we miss out in med Western medicine, right? Is like yeah. we don't include the energy body or the etheric body when we're diagnosing our issues. We just think, yeah. oh, I have a problem with me. It has to be something physical. But yeah. a lot of times it can be energetic or etheric. It, it's start, like it starts energetic, actually. It starts like outwards in the energy quantum field, and then it'll move in and start. Our chakras will get blocked and our meridians will get blocked. And then when we have something happen like what you had happen, it means that something has been, um, was, it's been festering for a while. That's a good word for it. And it needed to come up and show you, okay, there's something going on here. So you did, like I said, you did the right thing by getting it checked out. That's what I did in the beginning. I was, I would go to my medical people and get like a diagnosis. And then I would go to my healing people and say, let's get down to what the issue is and clear it. Well, can I ask you this then? Like, how do I overcome the anger part? It like, you know, like the anger towards the world, like almost because like, I'm not I'm not that way. And you probably know that just from yeah. getting to yeah. know me. I'm a really good hearted person and I, I would yeah, give you a are. picture off my back. But like I just have this like from time to time I just get like I get really triggered 
You know what I yeah. mean? And I think it's stemming yeah. from all that what happened. You know what I mean? So like, yes, of course. Like how of do course. we transcend that? Is there? Is there's it- a whole bunch of di- there's a whole bunch of different ways. Like right off the bat, I'm feeling I'm feeling um, because I know some of us as st- light workers, starseeds, etc., have a hard time meditating. We talked about this a little bit last time. Doing some kind of physical activity to move it out of the body. So working out, running, what like when you're up to it, right? Um, because that as well will release it. I, I went from that, I did that for years and I still move my body every day in some way or another, like go for a long walk as well. You can also set intentions to, to heal and clear that while you're doing, before you do your workout to help move it out. Uh, the other thing is, is um, you know, you could take a, sh- you can also set intentions like that and then take a shower and just imagine that everything is moving out of your body. There's, um, a lot of us like to soak in tubs and like I find as soon as if I'm super emotional, if I have like Epsom salt, sea salts and some essential oils, you can even use some of the Indies, like a couple of drops of Indies um, spray. If you don't have access to a tub, you can do a foot soak and it literally will reboot our physical body and take out the old information. So the old information shows up that like the emotions, when we have to get tr- when we get triggered and we go through a big healing and we oftentimes will get sick, we'll oftentimes get like cold or flu symptoms. And our bodies are so amazing because they literally will excrete fluids to remove everything intense out of our body. So the other thing I want to share with you is, you know, give yourself time to heal because there's no time matorium on our heart and what we need to do. So think about the situation as it came to you to move you into another deeper level of your healing. And our physical bodies need so much love and care right now. Like it's, it's going to get that way even stronger and stronger. Like I've been talking recently about we're already being prepared for the huge Lionsgate portal in um, my lion. (laughs) <laughs> in August, the 8-8 portal, because right now all of us are getting so called up to be on soul mission or get ready for soul mission or move into another level of it so we can unify as a frequency and start to really um, kick some butt, basically, and anchor in the light. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. I was going to say, I think I, I'm having like ascension symptoms too. And I know you deal with that. Like, yes, I was, I, I, I don't think I told you this last time. This just started happening. Like for the last couple of weeks, like my crown and my pineal gland or my third eye, they both tingle at times. And I, yes. yeah, I saw, I saw part of that show. I went back and watched a couple of your shows and I saw that. Yes. So that's amazing. Right. So we acknowledge like you, when you start receiving tingling here and here, yeah, that those are you're, you're receiving the light codes. That's how I, I I used to call it a helmet, and years and years years ago, before anyone was out there talking like you are, like sharing this information, we would have to go and find the information in books, like in secret New Age stores. Like nobody, not even the libraries carried this information, and everybody would talk about it secretly, right? So, um, but I would it it freaked me out because I would always feel all this energy coming into my crown chakra. And I had, and that's when I actually, I first started working with the Palladium. So to flip it around when the re, the previous question you asked me, I, I did everything backwards. Some people start working with their angels right away, or you know what I mean? Like they, everybody, or they start with their healing or everyone gets onto their path at some point and everyone's being called up. If we're not doing exactly what we need to be doing for our physical body right now, things are going to start to rear their heads. So we can start taking better care of our bodies. Like even for me, the last three weeks, I've completely shifted around what I'm eating. I too went to my acupuncturist because I hadn't had an adjustment for like six months. So my physical body needed a meridian adjustment. Um, And then I also am taking some new herbal supplements as well. So everything's shifted in the last couple of weeks. And that's because the light codes are getting stronger and stronger. You absolutely are experiencing ascension symptoms. Absolutely. Because the solar, so the solar flares are getting stronger and stronger. And what they're doing is they're flooding our physical body and our energy bodies with so much mass of light to bring our, our DNA online, to bring our, our uh, dormant DNA online. And what it's doing is it's going into our cells and our organs and our chakras and our meridians to show us where the blocks are. Like what we need to do to fix them. Yeah. I was gonna say, what do you think this is all leading up to? Do you agree with like some of the new age beliefs that we're actually ascending to a fifth dimension, or do you believe it's just an expansion of consciousness, or do you think 
humans will. I think it's all. I think it's all of it. I think it's uh, it's all of it. Yeah. And what what I'm starting to understand is we we all have the old structures within us. So so the grid work that we talk about that's in and around the planet that Andy does that I do that a bunch of people do as well is also within us. So when we incarnated, we ended up with these old belief systems and structures in our cells, in our um, organs, and our healing and our awakening, which we can't go backwards now. There's no way. <laughs> We're not going backwards now. We're not I'm going back to sleep at all. Even if, if we try to go to sleep, our bodies will and our soul will come in. You know, our soul's running the show now. Our higher self is running the show because we all agreed to be here at this time to be part of this experience for the so it is a consciousness expansion um i think in the beginning i did feel like we were in a way we are going to the fifth dimension we're going but we're going literally to a new re timeline and reality that's what we're working towards but we're doing it from within so as the light codes are coming in they're bringing in the new structures to anchor into our physical bodies and then we project out the new but we're also you know it's a slow process um, I don't know if you ever, if you've read a lot of uh, Dolores Cannon, or I, love I, Dolores I, Cannon. I yeah. I, I so there's the, that uh, the, the three waves of volunteers. I used to. Have yeah, that. yeah, yeah. That. Her, so she was like one of the people that I first watched on YouTube when she was still alive, and her messages just resonated with me. And it, it like that's the big light bulb for me. I didn't start talking about star seeds till 2017. Um, I knew that I was a starcy, but it got snoozed so I could still function in the regular world and work and, and do what I needed to do. Because as soon as I found out I was a starseed in the 90s, I just wanted to go home. I didn't want to be here anymore. And I think the anger is quite valid because this planet is cray cray. Like there's so much craziness going on. Yeah, and our and part of our that. part of our awakening is this planet is a mess. Like, what the heck? That's why we're here, though. Like, we're the ones that are going to make the change. We're the ones, yeah, and we're going to make it, yeah. It's not just relationships. It's everything that we deal with on a regular basis. I mean, oh, this yeah. world will find ways to bring you down, right? Like, just even trying to figure out, um, you know, for me, trying to buy a com new computer. Like, just me even trying to do that has been such a huge project, because, right? So there's just things <laughs> that will make us, the things that will make us spin out for days and sometimes we just and it, and it is it's overwhelming and i think for me, i think patience is such a key component of being on this journey right now patience with ourselves and understanding that the collective and the way the planet's been running is a mess and we came in to make it better so we can't so i think part of what you can start doing as well besides you know trying to find some kind of meditation and way to to move it out notice pay attention to when you get triggered and then try to find some tools to help you like just drop that and move into move into something else um like if you're you know it, it something happens like go for a walk go for a run go to the gym something like that okay just shift it up listen to some good music whatever i always make like i recommend making a list making a little post-it note list of things that will help to shift your frequency. And yeah, so, and sometimes we have to be angry and just look, get it out of our system. And then, you know, drink some water and then move into something that brings us joy. But yeah, I, I think that was the anger, looking back on it, you and I talking, that was the anger that I was suppressing. Because we came in as very intuitive, awake beings, even as kids. We figured out pretty early on that our parents didn't know what they were doing. That our teachers didn't know what they were doing, that nobody's really running the show down here. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so it can be, yeah. If we focus on what's going on in the third dimension and the collective, we can get all caught up in the stories and get very, very either angry or go into fear or all of that. So I'm try I just keep trying to move myself into a higher perspective around it. But I too, like I, I think patience and being impatient are two very key aspects of all of us being here right now. Um, pay, you know, like you and I were very patient today, to me trying to get on the call. And maybe like two years ago, that would have triggered me. Right. Yeah.
Yeah, I was gonna say it's weird. Like you said that that like our parents and teachers didn't know. Like it's it's almost like that those people that are I, that are above us uh, that and I'm not, maybe not our parents, but like the teachers, the the, the people of society, they become the prison guards of this yeah. prison planet, you know? Yeah. And yeah. that's what we're trying to break out of. Like, and I yeah. think it's star seeds, and I think we are doing that. It's just we are, we are. Well, we've had to do it. We've had to do it covertly for years. Like I would say even this year, probably around March, I started to feel a little bit more freedom around being able to move around a little bit more and not have so many energy attacks and that kind of thing. And, and I, and all of this, all of what we're going through is to help us clear out the lower energies. So when things get triggered, we have to accept, okay, I'm, I'm human. I have these emotions and I have to release it. Sometimes when it's really big though, like if something really comes like, you know, when the kettle boils, that means it, and we can look at it after it's multidimensional. It's a trigger that, that we all came in to heal and it has to kind of, you know, explode like either a deep cry, you know, or, a, or a, like anger needs to come out some way because then we know how big it is. And that's one of the key things that we came in to heal and clear multidimensionally. And that's why I got into the Akashic Records. So I got into the Akashic Records after the Galactics came back to me in 2017 and said, hey, Pink Bella, we want you to start talking about, you know, Blu-rays and star seeds on YouTube. And I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm just going to be over here talking about Twin Flames. I don't really want to do that. Thank you. Have a good day, right? And then they brought on a physical agony. My back went out and I was... Um, physically like not able to move for three days and all I could do was put ice packs on take some pain pain relievers until I could move and then uh, they kept bringing me these videos about star seeds and they were showing me on YouTube how many people were already talking about star seeds and I didn't know that so yeah, I was I absolutely was agreeing with them yes thank you for coming in and helping to heal me and then I will start talking about star seeds and I did yeah, well, what, I mean, what, what 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 is a what is a Blu-ray? I mean, I, I don't get as deep into this as you and Indy. Like, I, that's I mean, okay. I just, that's why we're that's why we're having this conversation. It's all good. So I learned about Blu-rays initially as a twin flame. So even the twin flame journey for me, I can talk about it very much, very much from a higher perspective. If I had just ended it like a few months ago, it would be still painful. There'd still be a lot of pain that I would be working through as well. But, but I released myself from that aspect in 2018. So I've had plenty of space so I can st help Twin Flames and, and it's no problem. But, um, okay, sorry. Oh, Blu-ray. So the Blu-ray came to me as a word coding through the Twin Flame journey. There were, suddenly there were Blu-ray Twin Flames and I went, oh yeah, that's me. That's who I am. The Blu-ray Twin Flame will, uh, will, vet, will lead to the Starseed Collective. And so I started digging in deep with Archangel Michael and um, different galactic councils. They wanted me to share about Blu-rays. I did like this whole little journey about me being a Blu-ray on YouTube. The more we share, like even what you're doing, the more we share with everyone, then the more that can come in. It's like we're it's like we're giving in, transmissions and information to the collective and then we can receive more information. So that's why I also started my YouTube channel and I was doing Facebook lives then too. And so as soon as I I would always say, what's next? What would you like me to share on my channel next? And they they would say, we want you to start bringing in transmissions first from the Palladians, then, you know, the Arcturians and the Andromedans. I worked through different aspects. And one day I said, what's, what is the key for me to help as many star seeds as possible? And they, they said, we want you to start talking about Blu-rays. So I also did um, my own research about it and received information. So the being a Blu-ray, all of us as star seeds are Blu-rays. We've got the, this frequency. We think about colors all having different frequencies, like even with the chakra chart, the chakra chart will have different colors connected to the chakras they'll all have a different frequency. Well, the blue frequency is off the charts. And it's something that we all have within us. And it actually has, is keeping us, it's our superpower, I call it. They said to me, it's within us, it gets activated, and then it keeps us on our path. 
it keeps us connected to source universal energy beyond this planet. And then, and we're, and we are protected. It's also a very protective frequency, but it helps to kind of like, if we think about all of us as star seeds and light workers around the planet, we're all in different locations, we're all trying to figure out what we're supposed to do individually, but as a collective, we're all working together. And that frequency also connects all of us as well. It's our, it's a, the blue is about uh, protection, clarity, purpose, and it's a very, very high frequency. And it's keeping us aligned in our awakening, our ascension path, and our mission as well. That's fascinating. Um, so yeah. how can we tell, because I know you you cover like Andromeda, Orion, Vega, stuff like that. Like, how can we tell where we are? Like, for example, like I had someone do like a starseed reading on me once, and I found out that I was possibly speak from speak up, but I'm not sure. Like, oh, okay. Um, oh, well, I do a couple things. I like I definitely am getting serious. For you i'm just listening to your higher self we also have a lot of aspects as well um earlier this year i started to just do basic galactic astrology for everyone because i want i for me personally i wanted to see who was drawn to me and what aspects were coming in so you're just reminding me about that so i just i used a tool just to find find that out but we you know there's a couple ways to look at it we're we're originally from somewhere and it was probably our last location <laughs> or it was our very, it, it would show up in our chart as our very first location. But what I've started to see as a pattern with star seeds is that we often have multiple aspects. So we have multiple planetary systems that we're connected to. So I, it's interesting how I worked with the Palladians quite a bit initially and they still work with me, but they're not like the key team that comes in for me anymore. And I think when I did my own chart, my uh, main aspect was Lyra. And I didn't even look into Lyra or look into my Lyra aspect till last year. So it's so fascinating to me. And I, of course, I love cats. I'm such a cat person. I have my activation at the Sphinx in Egypt. Like it's all, it's all, I can see it. It's like, oh, it's a big universe has a great sense of humor and we also believe it or not you're un, what you're doing is and you're you're doing great rob you're in the process of uncovering more of your map and more of your multi-dimensional information of who you are so there's no rush to it we just find these uh, these pieces and we just go wow so the the akashic records came to me one day i was out doing a walk by the ocean in the city and my team just came in and said, this is going to be part of your, the main part of your work to help people. You're going to be able to bring in information to assist people to help clear. It's like, it's like we've got this digital library that's attached to our physical avatar and our chakras that's, that pops in every once in a while and says, oh, by the way, you don't just have grief from this lifetime. You also suffered something, you know, with the fall of Atlantis. Or you had an Egyptian lifetime where, you know, all your possessions were taken away from you, that kind of thing. So it, it can be exhausting to do it. Like, I'm always doing this 24-7. I'm still, I, I'm still clearing um, aspects. And we're also clearing for our ancestors and all of that. But, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of pieces to ourselves. But I, I've gotten a serious um, energy from you as well. And when I first started doing this work, I was literally just working with the Palladian Emissaries of Light and the Sirius constellation. And it felt to me like most of us chose one or both of those constellations to be on to prepare for this mission. Yeah. So, do you think this is the most important time in, in a long time? of, of Yes. Our yeah. Yeah. That's, I joke sometimes, you know, that a bunch of us got coerced into coming here, um, you know. Um, <laughs> We're like, hey, yeah. come here, come here on vacation, you know, see earth and the, see earth and the animals. And then we're here and we're like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me out of so, here. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it got, it got, it got super serious from 20, you know, even now there's still so much going on out. Like if we, if any of us dive into the mainstream media, our frequency can get dragged down in about two seconds because we yeah. understand that the, how crazy the movie is and how much how much sadness and everything that's going on right so what we have to pull then we have to pull back and not focus on that and just go what can what can I do today to take care of my body to bring me some peace in my reality and to help me move forward yeah 
That's cool. That's, that's, that's so interesting. Well, I'm trying to think of, uh, I mean, I know I wanted you to see if you could pull a couple cards for the collective, but is there anything else you wanted to cover before we do that? I'm just trying to think. Um, let me just think what I sh shared with you. I guess just to say that, um, yes, we're all here at this time. It's very important. It does our mission, our soul mission, which I talk about a lot we're all getting called up to move into another level of it. So things will start to be removed from people. And I think we just went through a really intense eclipse season. So I think that that was like, I, I, um, I envision like a snow globe, right? You remember those old snow globes where you just shake it. And then every like that to me is what the eclipse season was like. Everybody, everyone got tossed and turned around oh, it was crazy. from the middle of eight, from the middle of April. We're, we're just now coming up for air. It so we're completely, it was oh, really bad. I would like, say, I, yeah. It was real bad. I'm not even kidding. Like, I, I, I kept seeing the full moon, and I was like, when is this going to stop? Like, this is like, I know, I know, I know. Was literally, just like you said, it yeah. was like insane. It was like it was. In upside down world times 10. Yeah. Like, well, I, for, I all, for all of us, I, and Mercury went retrograde through there as well. So there were a lot of technical issues. When Mercury goes retrograde, we also have a hard time receiving guidance from our guides and believe it or not, Mercury retrograde woke me back up when I was still in corporate. So they put me back to sleep so I could work in corporate. And then I ended up in this department where everybody, I'm a Gemini, everybody else was a Gemini. Like it was crazy. And suddenly a couple of Geminis knew about Mercury being part of our, our planetary system and also uh, communications and technology. And I started to see this pattern every time Mercury went retrograde of the same people showing up with the same problems that had come like three months before. So I started to look into that. So I, that me too, like I chose to come in as a Gemini Mercury retrograde has been about patterns for me and to help people through that. What my guide said to me this last time or the time before that is it's like a fog that comes in and even our guides and everything, they are, they don't have clear communication with us either. It's like a two way, you know, as below, so above. So it's kind of a messed up time for a couple of weeks. And then we also had this intense eclipse energy. Like, yeah, it was it, a lot of people had their lives turned upside down. A lot of people probably had to like move quickly. Uh, jobs ended, relationships ended. The universe will literally in the eclipse season, if we're not consciously setting intentions every day or trying to navigate our reality, the universe will come in and things, it looks like we're being picked on, things will get removed or things will happen to us, but it's literally the universe is trying to get us to our highest timeline and trying to get us out of a loop. I, yeah. I was going to say, because we have those loops and because we have patterns and stuff, do you see like a holographic nature in our reality or do you think it's, or do you agree with some of the people that say we're in like a simulation or do you think it's somewhat like, like that? To it's all, point? it's all of the above. And I feel like some of the work that myself and a lot of us are doing right now is trying to get us to leave the matrix, to release the old matrix programs within us, which is connected to the cash records, chakras, meridians. And we just, we can, and I would love to just be able to push a button and have everybody have it released right now, but everyone has to go at their own pace and do their, so to start with, our own personal healing is our way to our mission. Some of us are on mission, like you and me, we're already, we're, we're doing our thing that's going to keep evolving, but, but I'm also still healing and clearing, you know, um, because th there's always like another level. There's always something new maybe that triggers me or I have to dive in deep. This morning I got a message of like, oh, you need to clear all these timelines where ever, all your possessions were removed from you in multiple lifetimes. And I'm like, okay. So I don't react to it anymore, but it's like I, you, we kind of know when we're in a loop, when er everything kind of comes to a standstill nothing moves forward. Like we try to open doors, we try to move forward, we try to do something and nothing is moving for us. Uh, a big loop that many of us are, and I talked about this yesterday as well, was the, um, the abundance. So there's so many triggers around abundance and money on this planet, money, digital, you know, all of these things. And that also is like an imprint from our ancestors. We, and I, I found this really great quote the other day. We all have money wounds to a certain degree because we're healing and clearing them from other lifetimes, from our ancestors being having everything taken away from them, which we ended up with our, in our DNA. And also we have all these 
things that were like imprinted on us just being here saying that money is evil. And really, we're just in an exchange We're, we're you know, this is why Dolores Cannon said this planet is like one of the biggest schools on the planet, because a lot of us as starseeds have never dealt with money before. We've never dealt with any currencies. We've never known about this kind of evil that was, you know, um, cast on the money that we've worked with. And uh, the thing is, is that it's just an energy exchange program. And I remember when I first started working on healing my money issues, when I got down to it, it's like, oh, that it's connected, that I would bless any money that came to me, I would just be grateful and like, give it some love, and circulate it back into the system, because it, it because it has, we ha we've had all these belief systems implanted on us. But in actual fact, it's just energy, it's an exchange system that we agreed we agreed when we came here that we would somehow receive it and then give it for goods and services. And until uh, the collective gets to uh, all of us get to a frequency where we understand that we don't need that anymore, that's going to continue in one form or another. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, did you want to pull <laughs> it is, it is. I, Cause I too, like, so we all thought we were ascending back in 2012. We, you know, all of the people on YouTube were saying, yeah, you know, we're going to get into 2012. Everyone's going to be on new earth and we don't have to deal with this anymore. Well, here we are 2023. A little bit has changed, but not much has changed because we've been, we've been patiently waiting for more and more souls to awaken, to get on their mission and say no to the old energy. Right. And that's part and parcel of the work that you're doing as well. You're bringing out a lot of new information and talking about topics that um, other people haven't wanted to talk about. So it's been fantastic. But there, there, we're still, it's slow. It's so slow down here for the collective to get it. And yeah, yeah. It's interesting yeah. though. It, it, it really is. Um, well, I'm, I'm trying to think if I have any other questions. Um, I think that's it. But did you want to pull a card for the collective before we uh, finish up or? Yeah, let's, let's pull a couple cards. I've actually got, um, uh, light stars decks as well. She gifted them to me, so I can pull a couple of those. Because sometimes oh, she has a nice, out. she has a nice, she has a nice deck. Like yeah. So how I started? So I started with cards first. I actually uh, used to do like angel card readings. That's how I started, and I did I did, did some training with some people in the industry way back, like 2013, 14, um, and learned about tarot because you know when we're drawn to things that we love that were interests us. We're literally bringing in gifts that we already know. And that was the same with the Akashic Records. I'd already been involved in uh, sharing that information in other lifetimes, right? And when I talk about other lifetimes, everyone, I'm not just talking about on this planet. I'm talking multidimensional. We've had other lifetimes on planetary systems as well. So just to let everybody know that. But that's yeah. interesting. That, that's really cool. Um, I, 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 I'd, I'd love to have you on to do readings for the audience sometime too. That would be great. Like, you know, like, I'd love to do that as well. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. I mean, or like you said, we can do it on rumble so we can talk more freely. You know what I mean? But yeah. Yeah. If you want to do it, you know, we can, you know, we can figure something out. Yeah. We'll talk, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Cause I want to start doing some deep dives on rumble because I know, even now, I know that there are still people that are losing their channels here on YouTube. Yeah. So that always, to me, is a touchstone of it's not it's not quite being managed the way we all want it to yet. There isn't quite the free speech that we can all talk about everything on every platform yet. So yeah, exactly. I agree. I yeah, agree. Yeah. So that's and, always and like I peek in and go, oh, I just saw one of my. My counterparts just lost their channel. So I'm like you, like I, I, I'm keeping my, my topics on my regular YouTube channel at a very, you know, at a high frequency to not ruffle any feathers, but I would like to be able to, to be able to speak more freely and talk about other things. Me on, too, uh, I'm the exact same way. It's just like getting people to go over there is like, a, it's like, it's like pulling teeth. You know what I mean? Like it's like yeah. Well, I ha well, one of yeah, I was going to talk to you about this. One of my ideas was we could start off on YouTube and then we could flip over to Rumble in the beginning. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, just to give you an idea, of like what I have, like ten thousand subscribers on YouTube. I know. I have, Congratulations! Like, I know. I'm so excited for you. On Rumble, that just shows you that like it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. Not not yet, but I'm starting to see more more souls now move over to Rumble as okay. well so yeah. yeah so it's it is happening i agree with you so it's not and i 
have shared this with my tribe as well on YouTube that I'm only going to get into things to a certain level on YouTube that I'm not yeah. able to dive deep into things because we're, it's not possible. So that's why I've been wanting to move to another platform. I was doing it on telegram. I do have a telegram channel as well, but telegram has a hard time saving things. Um, so I, so I would always have to, it was like Instagram. I'd always have to save the file and load it up and it was just too complicated. I, I'm a star seed that likes easy. Yeah. <laughs> I like it to go easy. So I stopped doing that and not a lot of people were coming over to telegram too, but it's like, we have to, in a way we have to be on multiple channels to be able to share whatever we need to share for sure. Yeah, I agree. I, I couldn't agree a hundred. I agree a hundred percent. Me too. Yeah. yeah and so maybe nice. we weren't, maybe everybody wasn't worried, wasn't ready for rumble last year because I actually did start my channel last year. Um, maybe everybody wasn't ready for it, but I think everyone's starting to understand like, okay, I can click on this link and go to rumble now and that's okay. I'm still watching a video. It's like a retraining process. It's like I, I, looking at the collective, some of the positive things that came out of the lockdown was now everybody is okay about doing zoom calls. Like there yeah. are people that never would have gotten on their computer to do a Zoom call in their life, but suddenly everybody was working from home and Zoom calls are like, oh yeah, let's get on Zoom. You know what I mean? So it, it, that in itself elevated the collective into getting more into like, this is just part of our reality now. Is to I, do that. I couldn't agree. I, I agree a hundred and ten percent. Like I, I, too. I, I totally agree. I mean, <laughs> okay. I just. I, oh, one of the things I'm going to do when we do another show is I'm going to try and get another camera so I can show the cards as well. Uh, so I just pulled them while we were talking. So this is interesting. We got first off. We got uh, temperance. This is for everyone. I've just asked for the best messages to come in today. So we got temperance about balance. This was coming in from my last readings that I did the last couple of days we're going to be asked as a collective and individually to try and find ways to stay balanced every day because we're no longer in the retrograde where we moved into the suns now in Gemini. So we're in an air energy. We're no longer in the earth energy of Taurus and the sun codes here in the Northern he Northern hemisphere. We're heading into summer when the sun gets stronger, the light codes get stronger. The solar flares get stronger, which means that our trying to stay balanced and hydrated and grounded is going to be our priority. So even the soul has, hold on, I'm not even holding it right. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, water, water in the cups, right? So And uh, feet near the water. So re remember all of you to stay hydrated. Try and spend time if you're near water, like a lake, a river, um, ocean. Try and spend some time. You don't have to go there every day, but just make sure that you're hydrating and like appreciating drinking lots of water. I That was one of the messages for my acupuncturist. I thought I can't drink any more water than I'm drinking. Like, how can he think that my, but he, it, from his perspective, my body was dehydrated. So I started to realize I needed to add something more to my water, that my body wasn't absorbing whatever I needed in the water. So that was really fascinating to me. What do you yeah. add in your water? Are you putting like pink Himalayan salts or something? Or yeah, you... uh, I just switched to like sea salt. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just, because I have been using Himalayan salt and for some reason my body wanted sea salt. I used to add a hydrator. You can buy those like, uh, you know, uh, hydrators that are not with electrolytes that don't have sugar in them. That's really good as well. But just sea salt or Himalayan salt, a pinch of that is perfect as well. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a really yeah. Good tip. yeah. Thank you. Okay. So this, you're welcome. So this is the devil card in this deck. And that means, and that came in yesterday. So that energy, I call it team D. They're still here. Our dark galactic friends. <laughs> the AI, all of that, that energy is ramping up this week. So there could be some false flags that are coming. There could be a whole bunch of things that are coming. Um, and that's why they're wanting us to, st to stay balanced, to have our tools. When something gets intense, to be able to go to our tools, to reground and regroup. So when I go to my forest and I hu hug my tree, I'm not thinking about what's going on in the collective. And this energy cannot get to us when we're in nature because we're at a higher frequency. So there, we don't, we, you, it's very rare that you would receive an energy attack while you're in nature. You know, well. what's interesting. I've been going to this park right by my house. It's like a, oh, they have a lot of like, you know, they have like everything there. They have a, a creek. There's a, you know, there's a creek. Cause I, I live in Pittsburgh, which it's like landlocked. There's rivers here, but like, but this park there's, so there's that there's like, 
a track you can run around. There's oh, like, good. you know, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's just like, it's enormous. It's like, that's, per it's that's really perfect. And that, and that's whoever had the vision for that. That's beautiful. Right. So yeah. that's even when I, the last time I visited New York, that's what I really noticed in New York as well. Like all the neighborhoods have these, these little parks with like fountains and water. And, and I thought that's so necessary, especially in cities, especially in cities for people to be able to go. Yeah. You're doing the right thing. Yeah. So when you're called to go there, go for sure. Okay. You're going to love this. Everyone's going through, this came in yesterday too. All right. Third eye activation. Um, so that came in yesterday. So our, our intuitive abilities are so ramping up and the other team doesn't want that. They don't want, like, they're, they're still, like, they're, they're still at this frequency. The other guys, they're like, we don't want the star season light workers to stay awake. We don't want them to have their superpowers. So we're going to, so some of you might personally be, feel like you're going through some energy attacks and just know that do something to raise your frequency binaural beats go to nature do something because that energy will yeah. just leave and it's because we're going through a massive third eye and pineal gland pituitary gland activation right now yeah we're getting ramped up wow. we also got the king yeah we also got the king of pentacles now for me this is source universal energy saying we are all abundant we are all prosperous we're we're clearing the layers to allow it to come in and the belief systems that all of those beings out there have told us only a few select people can have money. Everybody else, it, it, no, that's all a lie. And that's what we're clearing out. And all of the journeys, whether it be around abundance or twin flame or our health is really redirecting us back to our heart, our higher self, our divine connection, which is our solid connection. And that blue ray frequency that I talked to you about, that's all of our superpower to make sure that we're always connected. We are all connected. We're clearing out the clutter. So even, we're clearing out the old layers, the clutter, we're decluttering our energy so that we feel that connection more. You're going to feel it in nature. And I'll tell you when I first realized it was from Dolores Cannon, I think one of her talks in 2013, I first realized that I still had this program running from when I worked in corporate that I didn't have time to go outside. And I caught that voice that one day and I was like, no, I, I love earth. I came here to be with earth. I'm going to go outside. So that flipped it around for me. And, but I, that like, I feel like those messages, they're not just our ego. There are subliminal messages being sent to all of us constantly on the old airwaves saying you're not worthy. You don't deserve that. You, you don't have time to do that. You don't have time to go outside. I, I, I have something interesting to share. Like I was get, I was doing so well. Like I have my podcast everywhere. I'm like on Spotify. Yes, I just noticed that you're on Spotify. That's fantastic. You're so, all over the place. So what what happened was I was doing so good on Spotify that it was like I was sponsored by Spotify and it was like paying my bills. Well, then just recently I got to figure this out now. Like that my now like that's over all of a sudden. So it's like it's like you said, it's like the, the, the matrix brings things into our life. It giveth and taketh, right? So I don't know if they're no. going to re renew me or I'm hoping they do, but like, you know, it's like, it's like, I, and I don't want to charge my subscribers. I, I don't, I feel like. I, I know, I you know. know. It's like I, I have some, I have some ideas about that. So we'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's like, as an example, someone receiving so much income from certain platforms that are mainstream and then tomorrow everything gets pulled away. Yeah, so I mean, it, it and it that will bring up oh that'll trigger a whole bunch of stuff absolutely oh yeah you take away you take away any of our our um, resources we're immediately going to go into victim and why me and all of that of course that's natural but I'll tell you it's happened to me as well things have been removed for me the last couple of years as well and what I'm starting to do is and this takes time I'm starting to go with the flow really understanding when one door closes another one's opening. So I once we get, yeah, so once we get past the emotion, we can go within and go, what's my next directive? Where else should I go? And I, I think a lot of it, so I'll share with you, I had another platform that did the same thing for me. And it was interesting. As soon as I started that course, uh, something got removed for me as well. And um, I thought, initially, I thought it was going to come back. It didn't come back. And they, and actually, I contacted the company directly, and they didn't respond to me at all, which is completely unprofessional. So like no customer service at all. 
And I thought, well, and, wonder, and a, right? well, no, what I, what, and so I'm going to share with you because what you were just talking about. So what that shared with me was the frequencies that are running that collective do not want our work. So we have to find another way, a higher frequency platform. So in a way it was a blessing for me because I was using this platform and I was, I'm building a new website. So now I'm not going to use them. I'm going to something completely different. So yeah. that's the same with you. You can, you can, it, they may come back, but I feel there's going to be other, there'll be other things. There'll be another platform that will sponsor you. Yeah, I, I agree. And thank you for saying yeah. that. That's really, yeah. that's really well said. I mean, I, I just think it's like, it, it's, it's interesting. Like, you know, I wasn't trying to be Joe Rogan or anything like, you know, you remember Joe Rogan went to Spotify, but no, yeah. I mean, it, was, it was weird because it was like, it, but it, this just shows you like, that, like some platforms, like, and I'm not going to say. Rob, can I ask you when? Can I ask you when that happened? Well, it, it's supposed to end June first, but then I oh, okay. noticed like, okay. that like my income started. But then they, they like say like the, I'm right now I'm on like what's it's called a, a host red ad where it's just a, a ad that I read. But then I could get on automated ads, so it's not completely over. Okay. But it's okay. Just like yeah. ending, and then I'm, I'm like, yeah. Well, thankfully, I do have some money saved, but it's like yeah. I don't want to run through all my money trying to figure out my next move. You know? What yeah. I mean? No, I agree, and no, and I think like there are there we we are we're expanding. Out out, like other things are coming in to help support us. That's what the Jupiter and Taurus energy is all about. Jupiter is the big, one of the big, so let's just talk about the planets for a minute in our galaxy. All the planets in our galaxy are connected to our chakra system. So when we go through big planetary movements like Jupiter moving into a different energy, it impacts our reality and our frequency. So even myself, I've been adjusting to Mercury to goes direct. I've been adjusting to we're out of the eclipse season. I've been adjusting to Jupiter's now moved into a different energy. And basically I've been working with the council of Jupiter and they're like, yeah, we've got a new council now. Like it changes for them as well. So, so we are, the thing is, is that we just have to trust and have faith and surrender that. Okay. That might change. So team of light, like what can I do? What other options should I be looking at right now to investigate for that tenfold? Okay. So there'll be, there will be something that kind of comes in to take its place as well. We just have to be open to, sur and it's hard to surrender. Honestly, yeah. that's another thing. It's hard to trust and have faith and surrender. That's what we're relearning. We've had lifetimes and lifetimes of being pushed down and not being, not being connected to source and not being able, you know, and if we haven't been here on the planet for multiple lifetimes, our ancestors, got pushed down. So we're clearing out those fears as well. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I'm so glad we did this today. I mean, I, I, I you don't understand like how much you've changed, like my outlook on life. Oh, me too. Hour. Like you it's really good. like shifted my perspective and like, yeah, I love the way that you look at life. I just have to give you this compliment that like, Oh, thank you. I, I mean, like I know you can get into the star seed stuff, but it seems like you can dip your toes into the conspiracy <laughs> stuff as well. And it's, oh, like yeah. you know a lot about oh, yeah. like, what's going on. Yeah. I, I well, that, yeah. It. Yeah. Because, when we went through the first lockdown, my team came to me and said, you have to start looking at all the conspiracy theories. And I, up until then, I've been in love and light. I'm like, no, love and light. I don't want to look at it. But I, I, was, uh, I had a roommate at that time and she was away. And they said, no, you need to start. So once I got into it, I couldn't stop. Um, oh, yeah. I, I was like, I was in this crash course to really get into the dark stuff because I needed to be prepared for whatever's coming. And yeah. also for my clients that were coming to me, they needed that assistance as well. So I was like, we're always in school. We're always bringing in some kind of aspect. So, oh yeah, just so everybody, so I'm always, that's when people come to my channel, you might think, oh, she doesn't know what's going on, but I absolutely know what's going on. It's just this year, I like I tried to dive into it more deeply last year and I was just under constant energy attack, which helped me increase my levels of protection. Um, yeah, that's so it was, I haven't learned like, and I think that's a lot of times I'm getting attacked because a lot of times, like, okay. Okay. Like, like, sometimes where like, I don't even want to return a direct message or an email. I, like there's something I can't explain it. Like it's no, like, no, no. I know I have to do that because it's my job I now. I know. I know. It's like an attack. It's, does that make sense? Yeah, that it does. Let's just quickly, uh, and then I'll finish the reading. Uh, I've talked about this before. I talked about it in the course, the vi find some kind of violet flame meditation that's clearing and healing and try to listen to that. And you can find a way to listen to it while you're walking as well, but that, and you can put it on loop while you're sleeping. So 
so once I found once I found out and remembered about the violin playing because it was brought to me like in the in the early 90s and I thought I don't know what this is it doesn't work for me I, right because I wasn't I wasn't conscious of it yet so it's one of our tools that has been brought back to us but it's a transmuted transmutation frequency and there are a lot, tons of meditations out there. I started with one with Archangel Michael, but there's like, I looked the other day because I looked for something to send to a client. There's a million violet flame transmutation meditations on YouTube now. So find one that, that resonates with you and there's, and it will transmute everything for you. Um, when we don't know what to do initially, we can go to meditations that other people have created to help us move through things okay but it is an absolutely there are there's energy coming from all of our platforms i run it through all of our platforms as well now like i run it through all everything that i use on social media i run it before i go to do my errands out in the world because there's constantly lower vibrational energy coming through our devices and all sorts of things for sure okay oh, yeah Okay, so let, I'll just, I just want to finish the reading for everyone because it's super positive. So we got the Wheel of Fortune. So energy is changing for all of us. And when this card comes forward, I usually like to ask, and that's a 10, right? I would like to ask what, so what direction? It's going backwards or forwards? No, it's going forwards. We got another 10, 10, 10. We got the card, destiny. And that everything that we've been working on right now has, is completing, and it's been to bring us spiritual strength. So we've all been kind of in our own little initiation process to get us to our right timeline and now we can start moving forward and moving and I the message I did such a long video yesterday because I just got this whole thing about soul missions are so important now for everyone to start just doing something daily that they love to stay in balance it doesn't always have to be you know 24 hours but to bring that balance in too so if you like you rob if you're finding you're always on your devices your your bought your soul wants some time out so maybe just i've what i've did, done with emails now i only look at my emails unless i'm meeting with somebody like twice a day now because i can be on email all day yeah <laughs> so, one thing I've noticed is it's easier to do at night like if you like it's yeah. like there's something about the night energy with some more calming and you can I like, agree. kind of focus on your work more you know i, I agree know okay i'm pulling just two more cards for us just out for uh, from light stars deck decks um and they're called celestial frequencies and magical dimensions so the first one we got is number 45 lifetimes. Now that's interesting because that is, let me just see if I can get this right. That's about the lifetimes past lives, the Akashic records, the healing and the clearing we're doing. So all of us, the triggers that we've been going through are connected to past lives and triggers. That's what the card says. <laughs> past lives is, is connected to the triggers. Okay. Especially if they're, if they like, if you wake up and you just like, I can't do this anymore. I want to leave the planet. Once you calm down, <laughs> I, I do that too. Oh, I've wanted to leave a number of times. Bring the ships, take me home, I'm done. Um, once we get through that energy, like we have to get the energy out of our body, right? Then we start diving into what triggered me. When did that start? Was that this lifetime? Was that childhood? Was it another lifetime? That's peeling the onion. That's how we start investigating, okay? Then the final message is number 14. You're going to love this disclosure disclosure wow. right so that i i do feel like some we're going to be receiving more disclosure energy if not this week it's coming um and this is connected to number 14 to the atlantean timeline as well and on my fi my final message is a lot of what we're healing and clearing right now is from the fall of atlantis uh, many of us were in Atlantis and we were there for the fall and it was devastating. And it was also a fight between science, AI and spirituality. And that's what collapsed that reality. So you can, we can see the parallels about why we're here to do the best we can every day to make sure that that doesn't happen again. That's cool. This, this, oh, I'm so, you don't know how happy I am. We did this. Like, this Me too. Like, yeah. really, like was amazing. Like, this, I mean, you really knocked it out of the park with everything. I mean, you really like. <laughs> you, well, you ask great questions. I'm just grateful to be here. I just, I wanted to just share whatever I could share today. So. Yeah. Well, um, I want everybody to go subscribe to your channel and, and, uh, and, and can you tell everybody where to find you and thank you so much. Yeah. So I'm, um, maybe we can put the links below the video as well, what I sent you. So you can find yes, me on YouTube. Me. Did you send them to me? I'll send, I'll I did, but I'll reset. I'll resend them. Yeah. So you can find me all okay. on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. 
but I mainly do videos on YouTube now. I My Telegram channel is for me to be able to pop in and do voicemails. Um, I do post there every day too, but I try to do little indiscreet voicemails of things that I can't share on YouTube. And then I also am a Rumble, but I'm just growing that channel as well. So that's coming because I want to be able to do like deep dives, like the disclosure. I would love to talk about what I know is coming to the forefront and I'm going to do a video about that. So that'll be on Rumble. And then, uh, yeah, I'll, my website, email is the best way to get in touch with me uh, to book uh, sessions and to contact me. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I'm going to hit stop recording now. And thank you everyone for tuning in. I'm going to post this tonight. So um, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's,